folks, welcome to the Contrarian Trader. This is Robert Desmond. It is Sunday, September the 5th, 2011. Folks, let's just get straight to uh, let's get straight to the economic data that was set that, that was released last week, and let's get straight to the the, to the ugliness of it. Um, we have the ISM index. This wasn't talked about all that much because it was overshadowed by the impl- the uh, the jobs numbers, and rightly so. But the ISM index, ISM index is, is a measure of growth in the economy. Now, a measure below 50 signals contraction in the economy. A measure, measure above 50 sing, signals expansion. Now, the economists have expected 48.5. So we actually beat on the ISM number, which is, which is probably why you didn't hear all that much about it. But still. This is a far cry from what it was only a couple of months ago. Remember, on June 31st, two things ended. One, stimulus ended. Two, QE2 ended. There's no more money left from stimulus, and QE2 is over. That ended June 31st. And I I told my numbers week after week, remember this is coming up, and, and sure enough, ever since May, you had the the stock market just trades sideways and then eventually just collapsed. And here we are today. So there's your ISM number. You have your initial jobless claims, which still came in above 400,000. You remember a couple of weeks ago, it just came in at 399,000. That's gone now. That's been revised up. That came during the debt debate. You don't think that the government numbers are rigged they are they came at a 398 399,000 there about just to get it below that psychological support level of 400,000 where it hasn't been below in months sure enough it's been revised up that number doesn't exist anymore uh, there is no job growth in the United States now what I find even more troubling is the fact that you have average hourly earnings declining 0.1%. Yet, your unit labor costs rose 3.3%. I wonder why. Why could that be? Could that be the cost of Obamacare slipping in to the economy, slipping into the cost of doing business? Uh, uh, not, Sarbanes-Oxy has been around for a number of years, but Dodd Frank, which makes me sick to even say that that is reform. Those two thugs, the Dodd Frank financial reform bill, or a law now, not bill, law. Are these the expenses that are being dragged in? Government being dragged in to the expense of doing business? That's a huge question mark. I believe it is, and it's certainly not being seen in average hourly earnings. What does that mean for the retailer? You don't want to be loaning the retailers when you have negative job growth, I mean negative earnings growth. The average hourly work week, I tell my members every time this comes up, this is a critical, critical number. It's because as a businessman, I have employees. Before I I, I want to bring on a new employee, I'm going to want to see whether or not I can offer that individual overtime. So I don't, I don't have to incur the cost of bringing on a new employee. I'll just offer them overtime. You're not seeing that. It's held steady for the most part, 34.3 hours per week. Uh, now it's down, 34.2. What, what do you say to these numbers? There have been trillions of dollars spent on trying to create jobs, yet we're losing them. And our beloved president is going to go on TV once again with some sort of a of a program. And all it is is going to be triangulation a la Clinton, except that Clinton was a true politician. He knew when to compromise. Where this guy is, he's just setting himself up the next election. So he's going to make the he's going to attempt to make the Republicans look bad, worse than the debate in Congress, as bad as it already is, um, you know what, bring on the fight. Bring it on. We need we need a, 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 a definitive election in 2012. 
I do not like to see any one party hold the executive and both houses of Congress. It's not good. Because absolute power corrupts absolutely. The Republicans did it when Bush had had uh, had the, the executive branch and Congress. He screwed up. So you can't have that. You can't have that for long before these people get too corrupt and they just go off the path of why they were elected in the first place. But you need that now. You need a change. You need all these 60s liberal Democrats and these 70s, 80s moderate Republicans to get voted out of office. They have to go. You need people that are from the small business arena to come in and to fight for the taxpayer. And when I mean fight for the taxpayer, I'll, I'll, I'm going to give you a for instance. Because you have a liberal Democratic president, you have over $4.2 billion paid out through subsidies to illegal immigrants. That's right. $4.2 billion paid out as subsidies. You may be asking, Bob, how did this happen? I could tell you how it happened. Because the do-gooders in, in Congress decided, you know what, anybody below X amount of dollars considered poverty level uh, will take their taxes. But you know what, at the end of the year, we're going to give them back tax credits to wipe out what they owe, up to $1,000. People were receiving a check back for $1,000. You want to know why people below $50,000 a year, earning below $50,000 a year, love government programs? They don't pay any taxes. They don't pay for it. So the illegal immigrants got smart, and they said, you know what? They said, I don't need a, a Social Security number to file taxes with the IRS. All I need is a taxpayer ID. And I could submit my tax return to the federal government with a taxpayer ID, and they'll send me a check back for $1,000. This began over five years ago. In the past five years, the number of illegal immigrants receiving $1,000 checks, or up to $1,000 checks to be fair, has increased fourfold. That's $4.2 billion of your money, your money, that is going to illegal immigrants. Not to mention the drain on services, hospitals, the drain on police services, uh, everything, school services, everything. Is going out to is going out to illegal immigrants. Now the response from the IRS when they were questioned about this was, you know what? It's not our job to check the residency requirements of people who file taxes. This is bizarro world. As long as you have this mentality in Congress, you must stay short this market. Again, you must stay short this market. Because it is completely out of control. This market is heading lower. I've told my members this, and I will tell you the same in, in the members' commentary. So please, if you want to know how to trade this market, I beg of you, I beg of you, please, take advantage of the 14-day free trial offer, sign up for the contrarian trader. You don't like it, cancel it. But please, I, I don't day trade, and I'm going to walk you through a trade in a moment of what we did recently. We had a great week last week. We had a great week last week, and I'll walk you through that in a moment. But remember these guys on Wall Street. Who put Obama into office? Who was their number one, who was Obama's number one contributor? Wall Street. You're going, to, you're, you're going to trust them with your money? I don't think so. They're the guys that got you into this trouble with this clown to begin with. So let's go on to the trade that we did last week. Actually, it's been, it took a couple of weeks to do this. I don't day trade, folks. I, I, unless, unless I buy a position, it skyrockets up in the same day, and I sell it. I rarely day trade because I, 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 I usually, A, sell into strength in the morning, B, buy at the close. Simple as that. That's why I don't day trade. I like setups over, it could take days, it could take weeks, 
could take months, depends upon the setup. Let's walk through FRO. This is a weekly, uh, each, we were into this trade for the past month, month and a half. So let's walk through it. What attracted me to FRO, frontline tanker, FRO? What you're doing is you're looking at a weekly chart of FRO. And I sent out a, a, an, a letter, a, my, my evening commentary to my subscribers. I said, FRO has appeared on our watch list. Get ready to buy it. Get ready to get long because nobody else likes it. It had, at the time we opened up the position, a 23, a little over 23% short interest. So almost a quarter of the shares were held short. Now look at how far extended this stock is from its 50-week moving average. These shorts made a tremendous amount of money in this stock. So we knew that, you, that that it was time to begin to add to position, and that's what we did. We saw that the RSI at that time was below, it was about, about 10, a little over that. So we began to add to position back here. We had this uh, 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 reversal, almost a reversal. We had the bottoming tail here, bad week a couple of weeks ago. We added more, sorry about that, folks. We added more throughout here. Sure enough, last week you had your spike up. We made our profits. I, took, I sent a note out last week to members, get out of FRO. Now, unfortunately, and I need to be forthcoming, I didn't get out of my entire position. So I'm still, I still have a small position in FRO. We did take profits. I still have a small position in FRO. I'm not all that worried about it. I'm probably going to add more this week. But I don't like this topping tail here. I couldn't, I couldn't get out of my position fast enough. But you have a topping tail here. You're probably going to see some sideways consolidation. What was the low of last week? Low of last week was 610. Expect it to bounce around. I think that's fairly good support. So I'll be sending out an alert to members. Listen, if you didn't get out of your position last week, don't worry. We're going to look to get back in this one again at a cheaper price. Now, granted, I got, I got out of most of my position. I still have about a quarter of what I had. I wish I could say I got rid of it all at the best price of the day. I didn't. I'm not going to bull crap here. But I'm not worried about it because our main concern is this, the preservation of capital and our trades have a risk to reward that it are in our favor. This stock still remains in our favor. Do I like the fact that you have this topping tail here on the, on the, on the candlestick? No, I don't. I don't like it in the least. But we have fairly solid support here. Earnings are in the rearview mirror. That's done. The Baltic Dry Sea Index, which nobody's been really paying attention to except for me and my members, the Baltic Dry, the Baltic Dry Sea Index is a measure of the cost of shipping goods, rates of shippers. It's been climbing upwards even during this decline in the markets. That is that's a deviation. I love deviations. And that's why we got along the front line. Everything was lining up perfectly. This is a typical example of one of our trades. Now, on a daily basis, when did we get into front line, maybe you may be asking? What, what, what triggered it? That's a 30 minute chart. I'll get to that in a moment. Here, we look for key reversals. Look at all these key reversals. These were telling you here. Look at back here. Front line was telling you that you began to have, in the beginning of August, second week of August, you began to have a tug of war between the longs and the shorts. The only problem was is the market was falling apart. And if the market was strong, I'm willing to bet that this would have been the bottom back here at the 697 level when you had this key reversal. But you didn't. The market fell apart, so it fell down even lower. I said, great, give me more. I'll keep buying it up, which is what we did. We bought it up, it rallied, and when I saw this neutral action on, uh, I forget what day this was, I guess it's last Thursday. Actually, it was last Wednesday. Last Wednesday, I saw this action, and I sent, I sent out a, the, the evening commentary to my, to my members, and I said, listen, uh, I, I wish I would have gotten out today at the last hour of trade. I didn't. I made a mistake. Get out of FRO in the morning. And sure enough, you had your opportunity for a brief amount of time to get out, capture profits. Um, 
I didn't get my whole trade executed. I felt confident that I didn't want to. I didn't want to panic and just dump everything at the market. That's the worst thing you could possibly do. I know my position. I know on a weekly basis, it's still at extreme oversold levels, and I actually had the opportunity to begin to build a new position. So I was playing with the house's money. No big deal. And we're going to look to do the same thing again. So please. You're going to have a president of the United States who is completely out of touch with the American public. Come on TV this week with new with new job creation uh, re <laughs> reports, uh, plans, whatever the hell he wants to call them. You're going to have a weak Republican response. The economic data sucks. You have illegal immigrants receiving $1,000 checks each year. Even the illegals find profit in filing taxes. You know when that happens. You know what? you got to be short the market. So please, sign up for the Contrarian Trader. Uh, if you have any questions, please, I don't want you to lose money. Please, send me an email. Ask me a question. If you question whether or not you should join or not, send me an email. Quiz me. I'll answer your, your, your question. If it's during trading hours, you give me some time. I have to reply to my members first. They take top priority. But you're important, too. So please, send me an email if you have a question. I'd be more than happy to answer it. And I'll talk to you soon. Hope to hear from you. Have a great, great trading week. Bye-bye.